You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong. And I'm Craig Blanchett, Mr. Infect. Mr. Father Infect now. That's right, Father Infect. That's Daddy true. Infect. Yep. There are a lot of different ways to call that. Uh, <laughs> this is a really exciting episode because we are previewing and revealing the full deck from Commander's Le- Commander Legends Baldur's Battle for Baldur's Gate. Party Time is the name of the pre-con. Today we're going to be going through all of the new cards in the deck. And there are 10 new cards in this deck to show off. And we're going to cover everyone's favorite topic, which is the reprint value. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, a lot of people are really excited for this set. But before we get into it, we got to shout out our sponsors. First up, channelfireball.com slash command. This is the place that you want to go if you're going to buy some magic cards, especially sealed products. The marketplace on Channel Fireball has incredible prices for sealed product. Some of the best in the business. And and we're talking about a pre-con today. And this is a pre-con that you may be interested in picking up. In fact, there may be many pre-cons that you're interested in picking up from Battle for Baldur's Gate. We're doing all the upgrade guides on our channel as well. So if you want to grab any of those, just go to channelfireball.com slash command. Check out their marketplace. You can also enter code command at checkout. That'll do the exact same thing. You can also pick up singles. There's lots of great stuff you can grab. Best part is you're shopping from local game stores around the country. You're supporting a great, great place that needs it the most because it's been a tough few years for local game stores and they've been the source for so much joy for me, I'm sure for you as well, Craig. Absolutely. So when you shop from Channel Fireball, you are also helping out local game stores. So make sure you go to channelfireball.com slash command to do all your magic shopping. Next up, we got Ultra Pro. Ultra Pro is the product that myself, Josh, Craig, and many of us here at the office have been using for almost decades at this point if not more, they've got all of the themed stuff for Baldur's Gate from they had all the theme stuff back when we did adventures in the forgotten realms yep. if you're and they're gonna have all the theme stuff for warhammer they're gonna have all the great theme stuff in general as well as just great products to protect your cards with your play mats your sleeves your deck boxes you can also go to shop.ultrapro.com slash command yeah this check is out so their cool. online store yeah it's really it's cool like right? ridiculous i saw this the last time i was qc in an episode that's awesome yeah and they have tons of stuff not only do they have tons of stuff from the new sets that are coming out but they've also got lots of old product that maybe they didn't fully sell out of and they'll do deals off on those as well and you can also just find stuff that you're like wait oh my gosh i didn't realize they had x character on this playmat i gotta get it so if you go to shop.ultrapro.com slash command you can pick up all of that stuff pretty awesome it's a blast you want to do it and of course, the last way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. We've got a bunch of new tiers. We just revamped it, including the chance to play with some of us on spell table. Craig, you just were able to do this the I other day, right? I just did that the other day and it was awesome. Shout out to at Artificer from uh, our Patreon and nice. uh, our Discord. He uh, he used the Galea deck that I did the pre-con upgrade guide. Yeah, really? And he like did the pre-con upgrade guide and then killed me with Triumph of the Hordes. <laughs> it was it was so epic. It was unbelievable. That's incredible. But, yeah, yeah, it was so. very, very cool come full circle like the deck that i did the upgrade for and then he beat me with it and he beat and it was a traxa that i was playing wow yeah you played a pretty powerful deck yeah so check it out patreon.com slash command zone for certain tiers you will get access to play spell table games with the staff here at the office including josh and myself at certain tiers but everyone also gets access to the discord where craig can just go and chat with uh this person as well as they can chat with us you can ask us questions on there make sure you check it out patreon.com slash command zone and we shout out one lucky patron every single episode so this week's episode is dedicated to Heather Lipsius. Heather, you rock. Yes, indeed. Okay, let's get right into it. It's a party time. Baldur's Gate pre-con reveal. We're going to do an uh, in-depth analysis on these cards in a future episode for the set reviews and all that stuff. This video is here to show you what's inside the product and to reveal to you the contents of the deck. So we're not going to be going deep on evaluations of the new cards and all that. We'll be giving impressions, but not sort of like what this combo is with. We're here to show you the deck and tell you what's inside, which is really exciting. So there are 10 new cards in this deck, including three ish new legendary creatures and this is the uh, pattern that we've seen across the pre-con so far which is there's a main commander yep. and then there's a monocolored commander plus uh, what's called a background so backgrounds are cards that function similarly to the partner mechanic except in this case the backgrounds are legendary enchantments that live in your command zone and they basically add an extra effect to commander creatures you control so you can have a creature in there that says choose a background and you can choose a background and then you can cast both of them out of your command zone and they're going to affect your game uh, in this 
case, the backgrounds are specific to the colors of the deck, but there are tons of them out there. And of course, we'll be covering those in a future episode as well. So let's get right into it and, and just preview what the new legendaries are. Craig, do you want to read out this first one, the, the lead commander of the deck? Yeah, absolutely. So it's Nalia de Arnis. She's a one white black for a 3-3 three, three human rogue. And she says, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard spells from the top of your library. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, which is one of each of those, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain death touch until end of turn. All right. So Nalia herself is a rogue. So to have a full party, you just need a cleric, warrior, and wizard on the battlefield. Oh, cool. Good point. And then every single combat on your turn, you're going to get a full plus one plus one counter across the board. And all your creatures, not just the ones that are in the party and they all gain death touch it definitely seems like a token deck uh she seems really good three three for three you know cmc but uh i i don't know i'm failing to see the like wow factor here <laughs> well it's the party mechanic we haven't seen this since adventure no since um before then actually it wasn't in afr it was in uh another set the party right, mechanic. Right, right. i forget it was in, which one Do it was like a dominaria maybe around that time around that time my yeah. memory is getting a little i think funny. it might have been uh what a car zendikar oh yes that's right it, it was, was in zendikar. Yep, yeah it was the, zendikar. The, the, the return that we had most recently but which is cool because there's a lot of, you know, humans, rogues, warriors, and mm -hmm. clerics out there now. Uh, and, you know, wizards, not humans. Yeah. Wizards. And hypothetically, more, you know, because hypothetically they'd be uh, putting more in the main set here, mm -hmm. you know, since this is the commander pre con. So. Well, a lot of people were wondering where the party mechanic was in AFR. Right. And it feels <laughs> right. like a very DD type mechanic. Exactly. So we get to see it returning in Battle for Baldur's Gate, which is exciting. It is cool. All right. So the next new card is Brockos, party leader. So this is three in the black for a 2-4 legendary creature orc. And check it out. Barakos is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. So if you have Barakos, he gets to count as one of the party members. So if you have both Nalia and Barakos out, then you've got a rogue. And then you can choose if Barakos counts as a cleric, warrior, or a wizard in that case to count towards the total party. Uh, so whenever Barakos attacks, defending player loses X life and you create X treasure tokens where X is the number of creatures in your party. And then it also says choose a background. And then we talked about this, but you can have a background as a second commander. So this is a two, four for four. I like this ability a bit more than Nalia is not going to lie. Yeah, I think I missed the second line of text or the first line of text, I should say, because I was like an orc that's the party leader that does. He's an orc. He's not one of yeah, any of these party rogue, leaders. Warrior or wizard. But, but, but turns out he's all of them. He's all of them, which is cool. Um, you know, the choose a background mechanic is incredible. I think it's going to be a little bit format warping. It's going to uh, make this card a bit better, I think, than Nalia uh, it, yeah. because it gets this additional thing that you can cast that will help you out. Um, so I do like this though. You're going to make a player lose life and then you're actually going to create treasures. So this also is ramp on a mono black card, depending on who's in your party. So the background is called folk hero. It's one in a white for a legendary enchantment background. And it says commander creatures you own have whenever you cast a spell that shares a creature type with this creature, a draw card, this ability triggers only once each turn. So the total cost for Barakos and folk hero is six mana, whereas Nalia is just three mana, but with Folk Hero, you get a card draw engine anytime you cast basically any of the party members. So anytime you cast a cleric, rogue, warrior, or a wizard, you get a draw card and it happens once each turn. So Barakos now has, with this background, he has ramp and card draw. So pretty good. Yeah, I definitely like Folk Hero a lot. I like it. I think I like it more than Brockos. <laughs> Just Folk Hero in general. And you want to find someone else to pair it with? Yeah. Can you run two backgrounds? Uh, I do not believe so. You only get one, you only per, get one. Yeah, right, right, right. per choose a background, not choose any many multiple backgrounds or whatever. Yep. But the fact that these are also mythic, uh, you know, implies their power level mm -hmm. hypothetically. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that both of these are mythic, uh, you know, shows, shows that they could be very powerful, which I agree with. You know, yeah. it's either ramp, like you said, or card draw. And at relatively low CMCs, like Folk Hero at two CMC is incredible. Yeah, you, you should be able to play this with a lot of the potential commanders that say choose a background. Yeah. And you get a build into that world, even if it's just one creature tribal. It works really well in this deck because you can have cleric, rogues, warriors, and wizards that all trigger it. And again, getting that card draw is really important. Yep. All right, so let's talk about some of the new cards. Uh, the first uh, group of cards we've just categorized under Party Matters cards because this is a party deck. So these cards care about parties. Party! Party! <laughs> so, uh, Craig, you want to read the first one? It is Harper yeah. Recruiter. Harper Recruiter. So it's a two and a white for a 3-1 human warrior. It's got flying. 
Whenever Harper Recruiter attacks, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a cleric card, a warrior card, and or a wizard card from among them, and put those cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it's selective card draw, which is great. Um, it's still card draw. It could potentially draw four cards. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, so if you just happen to be able to use a card to put the cards on the top of your library and you swing with Harper Recruiter one time, you get to draw all four of those cards if it happens to be a rogue, cleric, warrior, and or a wizard. So you can't have two wizards, you can't have two rogues, but if you have one of each, you get to draw all four in your hand. Yeah. Pretty good. That is. That's incredibly good. Yeah. Um, and it also is a warrior itself, so it fits inside the party lines. It definitely goes in a party deck, but yeah, I don't know what else. Yeah, it, I mean, maybe a changeling deck, something that has That's a lot of, yeah, but sure, sure, but sure. this is definitely for the Party Matters cards. Yeah. Uh, Season Dungeoneer is the next one. It's three and a white for a 3-4 creature human warrior. When Season Dungeoneer enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. So the initiative is basically whenever you take the initiative and at the beginning of your upkeep, you venture into the Undercity, uh, which is a new dungeon. And if you are already in one of the dungeons from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, you just advance to the next room. If you're not, you enter the Undercity, which is the newest dungeon in this set uh, which is the only dungeon by the way in this set and to count the the undercity has one two three four five rooms to get to the very end of it so when this creature enters the battlefield you get to go into the undercity at least and the first one is search your library for a basic land card put it into your hand then shuffle and then we'll show it on screen here but it has a bunch of other options similar to sort of the other dungeons you can one of them has you scrying or putting plus some plus some counters on goading a creature creating treasure tokens going drawing a card and the last one obviously is a bit more powerful where you reveal the top three cards of your library and put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield with three plus one plus some counters on it and it gains hex proof then you shuffle so season engineer the other part of the text outside of that because the dungeon itself isn't that relevant is whenever you attack target attacking cleric rogue warrior or wizard gains protection from creatures until end of turn and it explores so exploring is reveal the top card of your library you put that card into your hand if it is a land otherwise you put a plus and plus one counter on the creature that explores and then they put that card back on top or into your graveyard so this is actually pretty interesting here. This gives all of your creatures when they attack you, you get to choose one of them and it's whenever you attack. So you can be, you can have the seasoned engineer out and you can swing with your Harper recruiter or your commander and you can give it protection from creatures, which basically means unblockable. This no. just seems so like cool, very cool, but it just seems almost like, you know, the game Plinko. I do. Where it's like, it just seems like there's so many different options here that it's tough to give a good read on this card because yes, it's like, it's true. there's, a lot yeah, there's going on. so much that has to, well, under this situation, it does this, but under this situation, if you're already <laughs> in a dungeon, then go to the next room. But if, if you're not, you enter the undercity. And then if you have a full party, then this, like, I don't know, it, it seems like, yeah, you could have this, but you could also kind of have this. Yeah. So at the bare minimum... You cast Seasoned Engineer for four mana. You're going to enter the Undercity if you're not in a dungeon already. And you're going to search for a basic land, put it into your land, hand, and shuffle. Mm -hmm. So four mana, draw a card kind of from your deck. And then you're going to keep taking the initiative at the beginning of your next upkeep. You're going to keep going through it. But it's going to be pretty slow unless you have other cards that venture you through the dungeon. So if you have the initiative, let's say you play this and you have the initiative. And maybe I'm going off on something that we don't even know yet. But you let's still, say you have the initiative. Yeah, if you're already in the dungeon, you just venture one you step You just keep further. going even yeah. during your upkeep. Whatever That's you're cool. at, you just venture one step further. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I do like the exploring part. It is card advantage in a way. Uh, it's also a way to buff up creatures. It's kind of like a scry as well because you can choose to put the card on into your graveyard or keep it on top if it's not a land. Yeah, the explorer is definitely uh, a, an important part of this card. But it's also like this card it seems like it's going to be very confusing. Like there's going to be <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of on, a yeah. lot of searching the internet for this card for sure. I will say it goes really well with Barakos because you can give it protection and then you get to create treasure tokens. Uh, totally. Even if you don't have those creatures attacking, you still going to make the treasures based on that so that's that seems pretty nice there. that is definitely good synergy all right next up is a brand new board wipe and would you think it would you guess it it is tied to the party so why don't you read stick together so stick together is three white white for a sorcery it says each player chooses a party from among creatures they control then sacrifices the rest yep and just so. to clarify that means cleric rogue warrior or wizard yep and you get to choose up to one each so let's say you have a full party four creatures you cast stick together Everyone else looks around their board. They see if they have any of those warriors, clerics, rogues, or wizards. Probably wizard is going to be around there somewhere. Maybe a warrior. If, if you and Josh are at the table, for sure. Yeah, will never be a wizard. <laughs> but everything else gets wiped out. So this could be a very one-sided board wipe. Um, totally. 
seems really good specifically in this deck yes uh other decks probably not going to be caring as much about yep. this type of board wipe but very good for this deck and there's a chance that you keep four creatures including your commander and everyone else loses everything yeah all right next up we got multi-class baldric this is a new artifact equipment it costs one mana it says equip creature has a lifelink if you control a cleric death touch if you control a rogue haste if you have a warrior and flying if you have a wizard and as long as you have a full party prevent all damage that would be dealt to equipped creature and it equips for two so with a full party it's a one mana equip two uh prevent all damage done to equipped creature and it also has lifelink death touch haste and flying it's definitely giving it all the all the right you know attributes but except it's for hexproof Except for hexproof, which thank goodness it doesn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, imagine if you had you know, all prevent those... all damage and yeah, and exactly. Hexproof? Yeah, yeah, this thing would be very hard to kill. But it's you know it definitely gives you something to search. You know, a reason to try and put together a full party. It'll definitely depend on like how easy it is to get a full party together. But I do like the kind of uh, what is it, Scion of Draco kind of aspect of this. Right, it gives something based on if you have something. It's other attributes. Yeah, I think that's very cool, and it's correctly costed. You know, one to get it out, two to equip. Even if you only have two of the, it seems you know, pretty cheap to actually get out and equip yeah and totally. in this deck i mean worst case scenario it just is one mana two and you can choose one of the four maybe that it has it's, it's right. either lifelink or death touch or haste or flying but right. all of those are still pretty relevant for the most part i like lifelink more and more these days in commander totally um but the fact that it really rewards you for having all four party members out and you get just this this nutso creature and you prevent all damage done to it again it works really well with nalia it works really well with Barakos. It also really ties into the whole D and D aspect of it because, like, mm -hmm. there are certain uh, attributes you can give yourself in D and D, especially if you, you know, give yourself the right uh, equipment, etc., that can kind of make you a, a god almost, which is yeah. basically what this is making you. Yeah, you're leveling up because you got the full party with you. Yep. Uh, and the art's really funny too because it's the guy the wearing great. Yeah, everything yeah, yeah. Every, yeah, exactly. <laughs> from each of the things. <laughs> All right, I want to read the next one. This is called Solemn yep. Doom Guide. So Solemn Doom Guide is three black black for a four five tiefling cleric with flying. Each creature in your graveyard that's a cleric, rogue, warrior, and or wizards has unearth one and a black. And unearth says return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battle, ex exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Activate only as a sorcery. Ugh. So... I mean, it's cool. Like, it, you're definitely going to play this in the party deck, right? Because yep. everything now has unearthed for one and a black, which is great. Uh, four or five flyer for three black black is really good. I love how they're embracing tieflings. Cool. Yeah. Um, I yeah, the unearthed thing is nice. It feels like sort of like a bit of a finisher. You're yeah, going to get totally. this out, and then you're going to pay one and a black three times to get your best creatures out. All of a sudden, you're bringing out any of the creatures we just mentioned, like the Harper Recruiter, or the Seasoned Engineer, or even Barakos, maybe even your commander, you put it in there on purpose, and you get all those benefits as well to do so. So, seems pretty good um, for this deck, again. Unearth is something that can really catch people out of nowhere, because uh, they don't expect it to have such an impact, but all these creatures have attack triggers or enter the battlefield triggers. Yeah, this is definitely a good like mid to late game kind of, like you said, like a finisher or something like that. Yeah, but. and even just as a five mana, four or five flyer, it's not, you're not unhappy. Yeah, it's not it. irrelevant, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, so those are eight of the cards that are just basically kind of like uh, generic uh, party, party, party matters cards. There are two cards that we just categorize under generic good stuff cards, yep. and these ones are actually pretty interesting They're so quite good the first one is black market connection connections sorry more than one connection out there it's two in the black for an enchantment at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase choose one or more so the first one is called sell contraband create a treasure token you lose one life the second choice is called buy information draw a card you lose two life and the third one is called hire a mercenary create a three two colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling you lose three life i love this Wow. So by itself, you play this on the turn you play it on, two in the black, first main phase. You go to your pre-combat main... Oh, no, sorry, sorry. It's at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, so it needs to come back to your turn, or unless you can get it out before your first main phase. But you play this, it gets back to your turn, and then for three life, you can create a treasure token and draw a card. Yep, ramp and card draw for three life. For six life, you get to do those two, and you get to make a three, two shapeshifter creature that counts as a party member because it's a changeling. So I often find that you can also just, by the way, draw a card and lose two life. You don't need to even do the other two. You can choose one or more. So I think this is great. 
this card I think is just really, really fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, especially with the changeling, because now it fills anyone in your party, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, this, this card will definitely go in other decks as well. I feel like this is the most kind of overall good card in the, in the, in the set. Cause it's ramp card draw and then goes in certain, any changeling deck that runs black, basically. Any tribal deck that yeah. runs black could definitely use it. Right. Any deck that is black might just want to play this yeah. over Phyrexian arena. I yeah. think this is, better than Phyrexian Arena in a lot of ways because you also get to create treasure tokens and sometimes you get to create a creature. Now, losing six life every turn to do this is a lot. It's a bit Sylvan Library, you're losing like right up to eight life if you keep the other two cards, but yep. this one you're losing up to six life, but you do get a lot out of it. You're ramping yourself, you're drawing, and you're making a creature. Well, just think of like, you know, for three mana, it's it's nice enough to get out early, but for if you could at any point be like, for three life, I could ramp and card draw. Oh, I would totally and, Yeah, agree. right? Like, and it's a treasure token, so it's like you have one of any color. It's not colorless. Or, right, 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 there's, right, Yeah, there's huge, huge advantages to this card. Yeah, so I like Black Market Connections a lot. Yeah, uh, and the fact that, again, you can just choose one or more. Yeah, it's cool that you can choose multiple. multiple you do have things. to choose at least one. So at the minimum, you're the, the sort of the cheapest, the less pain, least painful way is create a treasure and lose one life, which I think... But you're most, selling contraband, so there's a little kind of fun aspect to it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I do think this is better than Phyrexian Arena in a lot of ways. It's also easier to cast because it's not one black black, it's two in a black. Yep. So I, I like this. This is It seems like this has the potential to be a staple in a lot of decks. All right, the last card here is also pretty good. Very good. It's a it's a white card that's all about the sort of ketchup mechanic that we've seen. Not the ketchup you would put on a burger, but the ketchup uh, in terms of get the new, back, yeah, back up the new speed. White's new kind of mechanic almost. Yeah, so it's new thing. Like Red God Impulsive Draw, White gets this. They've been doing a lot of really good white stuff. So this one's Deep Gnome Terramancer, one in a white for a 2-2 two -two Gnome Wizard with Flash. Very cool. Whenever one or more lands enters the battlefield under an opponent's control without being played, you can search your library for a Plains card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle doing this only once each turn this isn't even the catch-up mechanic no it's, it's not true. it's not even like uh yeah if it they, have if more, they have more lands you're right it's just right. if they play a fetch land guess what when they crack that fetch land you could even flash this out in response so that this guy enters and then the 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 fetch land enters yeah. or the, what they fetch for enters and you get to search for a planes card yeah so you could search for a dual land a triome uh, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it, this card is very cool yeah and it, so it, f it works with fetch lands it works with anytime someone just does a rampant growth because that is not playing a land Land. the land is entering the battlefield without being played yep and if you have this in your hand uh in your opening hand you play two lands you just sit and wait and you may be able to get up to three other lands if your opponents all are playing fetches or they have even like evolving wilds will still do it right you're going to get those lands on the battlefield because they're entering the battlefield without being played yep and they're making more ways to get you know typically higher cmc but ways to get more lands into the battlefield yeah so if any of your opponents are doing any of that having this on the battlefield and you can get it out in turn one or two yeah so you can just you know, ramp just, yeah, up with them yeah. doing this only once each turn but again you're going to be hoping that you p put your second land down you pass turn and craig plays a fetch land yeah josh plays a rampant growth this third person plays another fetch land and you are able to if, if they can't if they have to crack at that turn you're going to get it and they have to remove the deep gnome terror master for you not to get that effect which i don't think people are going to be doing they're yeah, just going to totally. let you get those lands yep yeah so we saved the best for last there but black market connections and deep gnome terror Mancer both seem like absolute staples of cards yeah uh you're probably going to see a lot of them around um i'm really really excited about both of them and and they, they enter into a really cool design space too i think absolutely all right coming up we're going to talk about the most exciting part of the deck for a lot of you which is the reprint value breakdown there's always a bunch of cards in here to find out how much this deck is worth based on just the reprints alone but before we get into it let's hear a quick message for our mid-roll sponsors Oh, hello, it is me, Hans Ericsson, living my best life, bonding with family, basking in nature, smelling the flowers. Ach, Hans, run! And running from the man-eating logoif. Oh! Thank goodness I have Everyman Jack, body wash, deodorant, and skincare to keep me feeling fresh on the go. With scents inspired by the great outdoors, Everyman Jack lets me smell like my favorite things, whether I'm relaxing with pals or running from monsters. Ah, beautiful sandalwood. Ah, vicious logoif! They also have shampoos, balms, and oils to nourish my hair and beard. And look at all this beard. So big, so healthy. Everyman Jack products are made with clean, naturally derived ingredients and without any 
of the harsh chemicals like parabens and dyes that can be abrasive to your skin and leave it feeling dry. Plus, they always use responsibly made packaging and everything is cruelty free. You know, now that I smell like nature, maybe the Lorgoyf won't be able to track me. Ak Hans, run! Oh, never mind. Goodbye, friends. Every Man Jack Men's Care. Naturally derived, outdoor inspired. Look for them at Target, Walmart, Amazon, or everymanjack.com. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Hi, everybody. It's me, Chandra. You know, I've been doing this Save the Multiverse thing for a really long time now. Like, original Lorwyn Planeswalker long. And don't get me wrong, it's definitely fun sometimes. I mean, I got to channel Fireball and I'll drowsy Titan out of existence. That was rad. But it's just one thing after another, you know? It's always, Chandra, burn this. Chandra, burn that. Well, I'm feeling burnt out. That's why I turned to BetterHelp for online counseling. See, burnout can take a toll on your life without you even realizing it, making you feel helpless, tired, and unmotivated. But talking to someone really helped me reignite the torch and prioritize my own well-being. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 40 Eight hours. Thanks to therapy, I'm feeling all fired up again. Let's burn stuff! This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Command Zone listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash command zone. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash command zone. The Command Zone is filmed in front of a live studio audience. So I said to the guy, that's not the Sylvan Library, that's my lunch! <laughs> Jimmy, he's such a rascal. Hey, what's going on here? Ooh. Well, we wanted to watch Friends, but it's not on American Netflix. So we decided to make our own sitcom instead. Aww. Well, I, I mean, I do appreciate all the effort, but why not just use ExpressVPN? You can fire up the app, change your location to the UK, and then go on Netflix and watch all the friends you want. ExpressVPN controls where sites think you're located, and with nearly a hundred different countries to choose from, that's a lot of Netflix libraries. <laughs> all right, Jake, that's enough with the soundboard. <laughs> And it's not just Netflix. It works with any streaming service, in HD and with lightning fast speeds. No buffering, no lag. Best of all, you can use it on your phone, computer, and even your smart TV. Looks like ExpressVPN is the VPN of our problems. <laughs> Jake. Sorry, Josh. I serve a higher calling now. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, use our link right now, expressvpn.com slash command, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash command. Again, go to expressvpn.com slash command to learn more. All right, we are back, and we are talking about party time! Party, woo! We, we, uh, I, I think we asked the editors in another episode to, to shine confetti down every time we said something. So uh, anytime we say party, Thanks and rogues. Woo. Maybe we could have a little bit of like some lights going on too. Um, all right, let's dive into the stats, stats, stats. So the stats of this deck, we're just gonna get right into it. There are seven sources of ramp. Which right. is a little low. That is low. I did another pre-con upgrade guy where they had 21 sources of ramp, which is a lot, <laughs> maybe too much. But seven is a bit low here, especially creature-based deck. You're trying to play a lot of cards. I think it's because it's Orzhov too, so it kind of has to be. Like, yeah, there's uh, not artifact. great options. They right. do have that deep gnome Terramancer, though, Craig. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there are 15 sources of card draw, however, which is very good. Um, yes. Maybe that's sort of what they're balancing out. You're going to draw a lot of cards. You're always going to hear land drops. Uh, six sources of target removal and four board wipes. So. Ooh. Those stats, I think, are a little unbalanced. I'd say lower the card draw, up the ramp a little bit. But overall, still a decent number of all of them. You're not going to be choked on mana or cards, it seems, when you play this deck typically. Um, now let's talk about the cards about the party. Woo! <laughs> so there are 19 Party Matters cards, which is a little bit low for a party deck. But I think it's because you have a lot of cards that are just creatures in the party as well, right? Right. So how many of those do we have, Greg? So there's 13 rogues, 21 clerics, 17 warriors, and 18 wizards. Okay. That's a lot. That is a lot. This is clearly a creature-based deck. There's a lot of creatures in here, and you want to be able to get the full party out. I also like that it's pretty well balanced between all four. Yeah, totally. It's uh, like clerics high, but that's you do want clerics to be high for the most part. 
Yeah, so you got warriors, wizards, rogues, and clerics all around sort of that 15 to 20 range, uh, which means that hopefully, this means that on average, when you're drawing cards out of your deck, you're going to hit them pretty evenly so that you can make sure you have the full party. Right. Um, and then there is nine spells in here that care about protection, protecting your party, which makes sense. Again, this is a creature-heavy deck. Yeah, you absolutely need that protection to make sure that you get all the benefits because you're basically building... It's not quite uh, Voltron, but you're kind of like building towards yeah. uh, this Voltron-y type of... Yeah, you're going for mass. Uh, you're going a little wide, but not really because each of them are creatures. You're not really making a bunch of tokens. Right. Uh, and then there are six sources of recursion. So in case things go haywire, you're able to get some stuff back. That's kind of cool. Also, another one of uh, White's new kind of uh, staple mm -hmm, mechanics mm -hmm. is bringing stuff back from the from the graveyard, which is cool. Yep. Because maybe you have a, like you're saying, like a rogue that you need to complete your party yeah. in your graveyard. Boom, recur it back. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the financial value. And remember, as always, the prices that we're talking about are taken prior to the deck being revealed, which is today, by the way, uh, because that obviously changes prices, especially on yeah. reprints. So this is only factoring in the reprint value because we don't actually know what the new cards are going to be worth on the market. And check it out. The reprint value for this deck is $119.20. That's really high. Yeah, that's actually really high because we're going to go back and take is a look. Is that the highest ever? I believe it is the highest value of the Commander Legends precons so okay. far. Uh, we're not sure if this is the highest value ever, ever. Wow. Um, so if we go back and we look at previous Commander precon releases, we can get some context as to just how high this is. Okay. So Commander 2019, the average reprint value we calculated was about $80. Yeah, that one was rough. Goes up to 96 for Commander 2020 Ikoria. Yeah. Back down to 88 for Strixhaven, and then all the way up to 115 for Forgotten Realms. So it was pretty high there. Okay. And then the Midnight Hunt precons also were pretty high, around $103. So okay. So that's actually really good still. There's a lot of great cards in here, and we actually could go through a ton of them but we can't go every card go over every card and the full deck list if you want to see it is going to be linked in the show notes in the show description below each episode so you can actually take a full look yourself and see the deck in all its glory i just want to quick aside too like you know the uh the strixhaven decks even though they were only 88 bucks did have a lot of really cool commander specific cards in the commander mm -hmm. uh that you know aren't really included in this uh reprint value because they're new yeah they're new cards and and we just know, talked about two incredibly good yeah, new cards deep known terror man I, and black market connection. exactly and a lot of times those new cards are the drivers of these mm -hmm. of these pre-cons and i feel like this one is going to have that lasting value because of those yeah those two cards yeah i know some people might think oh party that nah, seems like a really niche strategy i don't care about it but i think there's a lot of value packed in here yeah totally so here are the cards that are worth five dollars or more speaking about that sort of new mechanic that you were speaking of craig yep. savin's reclamation That's is at card. the very top here yeah ten dollars yep. and fifty cents this yep. is great you can fly back from your graveyard and you get to return a permanent with cmc3 or less from a graveyard to the battlefield so pretty good stuff yeah totally um this next one i actually didn't realize was so high i actually rarely see this card around yeah i mean it makes sense because i think it's from the the party the the five player kind of uh oh like, right, right the mtg party yeah, exactly yeah, 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 that yeah. like five player thing that they have but it's calculating lich uh and it's ten dollars and 25 cents yeah it's a creature that's menace it's four black black it just says whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents that player loses one life so it's not just your creatures by the way it's everyone's creatures it seems like a really good way to sort of get a lot of damage through um, totally Reminds me a little bit of Hellrider. But also something you don't see very much of because of that. Like they're they're rare because you do, they you have to pull it out of that that five player thing. Yeah, right? exactly. You don't see very many of them, so there aren't many in circulation. Right, right, right. Uh the next up, Skull Clamp. Yeah. Wow. Great card. Incredible. Just an absolute staple in so many token decks and just a really strong card. One man to play, one man to equip. Whenever a equipped creature dies, draw two cards, and it gives them plus one, mi plus one, minus one. So yep. sometimes it just kills the creatures on equipment. You get to draw two cards instantly. And that's what makes it so good, typically, yep. is you just pay one, draw two. But it, it, this that's one of those cards where if you don't have a Skull Clamp, it makes this deck even more worth buying. Yeah. Because you not only get the Skull Clamp, which is 10 bucks if you buy it by itself, but you get all this other extra stuff, too. Yep. Yep. Next up is Grim Hireling. This card got a lot of hype after AFR when it first came out because it's a team. Yeah, I'm surprised rogue. this is so much at this point. Holy crud. Well, again, it's it's a single card that came out in the set that maybe just didn't see as many cards printed for it. So it's whenever one more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create two treasure tokens. Yeah. So great way to just, in token decks especially, swing with a bunch of low guys, you get a bunch of treasures as a result. Totally. Um, two, whenever one more creatures deals combat damage. And sometimes you can just hit one player with this one thing, one flyer, and you get those two treasure tokens. That's 
really powerful stuff. Yep. This next one I like a lot. Like, it really helps fill out the party Mutavault. Oh, that's right. So, you know, you turn it into basically a changeling and... Pay one mana to land, yeah. Yep, one mana, yep. And that, uh, you know, if you're missing a party member, turn Mutavault into your missing party member and all of a sudden you're swinging with extra benefits. Yeah, and it doesn't take a place of another card in the deck because totally. it is a land. So that's $8.30 is where that was at. You also see this, obviously, in a lot of older constructed formats. Yeah, totally. Um, this next one's really powerful. It's a cleric as well. It's selfless spirit. Thank goodness they reprinted this. This was a it's a really good card. Yeah, it's one in the way for two one flying, and you could sack it to give your creatures indestructible until end of turn. So when we talked about the protection stat from earlier, this is a card that falls right in line with it. Absolutely. Uh, this was at eight dollars because there's spirit decks in it a lot makes of other formats. Sense. Yeah, it's a two mana two one flyer, so it just has a lot of good stats padded onto it already. Any recursion deck like this in a Carador deck, mm-hmm. this in a because you can just bring it back, sack it again. Yeah, it's not like you have to exile it once it hits the grave yard so yeah yeah really for, good for two mana quite quite good yeah and then along that same lines of protection we have mother of runes mother of runes yep just another really cheap spell to get out it is also a cleric remember when earlier when you said it's good to have more clerics well oh, this is why the yep. clerics help save the darn party they do yeah very important in D D as well it turns out <laughs> yeah and that's exactly what i was thinking also like final fantasy oh, clerics, yeah. clerics are always worth having around you need to have a good cleric around yeah exactly. and i used to play a healer as well when i played uh, mmos uh, so i do enjoy having a cleric around yeah uh so that was at five dollars so those all those cards are bangers uh, i think yeah. they're all really really strong stuff now let's talk about right. some of the cards that are worth two dollars or more uh and so the first one up is vault of the archangel it's a orzhov land again doesn't take the place of another card in the deck it gives your creatures death touch and lifelink until land of turn for four mana to a white and a black pretty good stuff it's really really good one of those cards that kind of got forgotten for a long time until recently they reprinted it a couple times yeah and that's sitting about yeah there was a secret layer right that, right. that had recently yeah yep, so that's yep. sitting about four dollars and fifty cents yep. and then the next land is a new one i actually like this eldraine land quite a bit yeah castle lockthwain this uh, extra card draw you know uh comes in untapped i believe if you have yep, if you control a swamp yep. Uh, so taps for a black and then one black black and tap it draw a card then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand yeah. so it's a cool kind of conditional card draw uh, sometimes you just need lands like this especially because it taps for black already you're not taking away from a swamp yep. later in the game you are totally happy to sink some extra mana into this on someone's end step draw a card lose two three life whatever Absolutely, it is yep. but you just need that extra card and that could make the whole difference in your hand yeah, or sometimes you don't have a card in your hand so this gets you one and you just lose one life so it's basically a, yeah. you know underworld connections or, a, mm-hmm, or a, mm-hmm. what do you call it yeah it, it does cost a little bit because you have to tap the land too so it's technically yeah, like it's four, four mana yeah. but again towards the end of a game you have a lot of extra mana lying around it may this might be the exact thing you need exactly uh now sitting about four dollars 25 cents same with his next card eight and a half tails it's a cleric and it protects your creatures man i remember reading this card back in the day this was uh one of my favorites when i first started playing commander yeah so champions it's... i think of kamigawa or one of the kamigawas yep so eight and a half tails white white for a two two fox cleric one in a white target permanent you control gains protection from white until end of turn so it's target permanent, which is pretty good. Oh, that's right. You can target the land, you can right. enchantment. Anything. And then for one open colon, uh, target spell or permanent becomes white until end of turn. Target spell or permanent. Uh. So you can basically give your stuff protection from anything. All right. of your permanents, if you have enough white or colorless mana... You just give it protection. Yeah, you only need three mana. Someone goes to uh, Cyclonic Rift, just your thing. You could turn that spell white and then turn the thing that they're trying to Cyclonic Rift to have protection from white until end of turn. The spell fizzles, just yep. like that. Uh, it's really flexible. If the spell is already white, like a Swords of Plowshares, then all you have to do is pay one in the white with eight and a half tails. Yep. Yep. And that was at $4.25 too. Again, just really efficient, really powerful. Totally. Uh, this next one I love. It's from Kaldheim. It's Maskwood Nexus. It's yeah. the perfect card for this kind of deck. Four mana for an artifact. Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And then you can pay three and tap it and you make a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with changeling. It's funny because it makes a blue creature in the white and black deck, but more importantly, it's a shapeshifter with changeling, so it counts as all the party members. So does that one creature... Basically, if you have a changeling, does that mean you have a full party? Nope. It counts as one of the four. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. still have to have three other creatures. They could be three shapeshifter changelings or three of the other party members and the changeling fills in that last slot. Yep. 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 I'm sure there's certain wordings on certain cards that mean different things, but that, that makes sense. Yep. 
Uh, and then next up, you got... Oh, so Mask of Nexus, again, about $4.20. And the exact same for the next card, which is War Room. Um, great draw draw card for, for a land. That's yeah, another land. So we've seen three lands here that are all really powerful and all great reprints. You can oh, pay wait. three and tap it to pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity draw card. So it could be one... Uh, one life if you're playing the mono black commander with the uh, background because your yep. color commander the commander I color identity is just one color yep just kind of cool or two but it's uh, or two yeah even two is fine but, but it's again. cool because it's also from the last commander set so it's almost like a continuing commander card also the yeah. the art is so cool it just reminds me of Game of Thrones <laughs> like so it reminds much. me of Game Nights because we, we sort of yeah, have similar chairs we do like have that the chairs, yeah, yeah it'd be right. cool to play in the war room like that that would be, be cool. cool but yeah Game of Thrones is a great comparison. Uh, and then Jazal Goldmane. This is a cat yeah. warrior. It's kind of a win condition. It gives your creatures plus X plus X, where X is the number of attacking creatures for uh, five mana. So yep. good stuff there. He also made a debut in a commander set back in the day. And oh, really? Good. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen him. It's been a while. Yep. Thanks, thanks for coming, Jazal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is yeah. also very important. These talisman talismans. of hierarchy. Yeah, talisman of hierarchy. Two dollars and ninety cents. All those talismans are good. You know, pay one life to get one of the colors that you're looking for. Yep. And can tap for a colorless no matter what. So it's not like the signets where it's like, let's yeah, say you only have two mana. Color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we've all been there a few times where it's like you have a signet, but then you want to use <laughs> I one I definitely mana. have. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I like talisman a lot. Just mana ramp as well on two. And there's a chance that you could play the talisman, then maybe you're a skull clamp because yep. you have that extra mana. Oh, totally. Yeah, there you go. And then the last card we'll mention over $2 is Order of White Clay. Never Guess what? It's a cleric. It's Kithkin. Kithkin. <laughs> one white white for a 1-4. You pay one white and then you untap it and you can return target creature card with CMC three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you can untap it, grab a lot of creatures we've already seen are three CMC or less. So again, this is sort of under that recursion uh, topic that we were talking about earlier in the stats. So overall, the deck contents, 10 new cards, 70 reprints, and 20 basic lands and a lot of really powerful stuff in here. So what yeah. do you think overall, Craig? I like it. You know, I think uh, as a deck, they've been making the pre-cons a lot better recently. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there have been Last a few times. Last couple years have been great, yeah. Yeah, recently where I just play against a pre-con and I will lose playing one of my tuned decks. And that is saying a lot, you know, for, yeah. for their uh, how they're putting these things together. So I'm sure it will perform very well together. But there does seem to be a bit of a Rube Goldberg type of effect with this whole have a full party. Do you have mm, this? Yeah. Do you have a cleric? Do you have this? You know, uh, that I think would be a bit frustrating at times. But the payoff would give you that kind of like in-game sub game mm -hmm. you know so it's like even if you don't win you kind of might win a little bit by just completing <laughs> by party and all that yeah stuff. by yeah. completing some sort of uh some sort of aspect of this so i think it's got a lot of uh areas as far as a deck by itself i think the pieces of this deck are really what make uh this thing sing uh there's a few cards in here that i would take out and put in other decks you know if i didn't have them already or yeah. you know the new there are cards. cards in here i would buy the pre-con just to get yeah totally um and i really like that mask with nexus is in here the yeah. reprint value is obviously really high um and not to mention who knows what those cards that we talked about uh black market connections and the what was that uh, the deep gnome terramancer yeah totally so yeah. those could be real highlights and you may see those be really in demand so this seems like a great pre-con all around i would also recommend this kind of pre-con to a newer player yeah because it's a fun thing right you're trying to build a party you have a thematic element to it as well and all your creatures are buffing each other up doing a lot of stuff not to mention i think if i was to play this deck i would probably do barakos and folk hero as the commander yeah over uh nalia just because you get that ramp and card draw i don't know if you can uh play a background that doesn't match your commander's color identity i don't know if it you can, can. choose a you background any background so it can it can it helps, not match. It, it you helps can add a color it? identity. Yeah. So that's what the uh, the precons have been so far is that the uh, the commander is two colors and then the commander that has a background is one of the two colors and the background is the other color. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's cool, similar cool. like in the precons of the past where you would have another card in there that matched the color identity that if you wanted to switch that one out you could do that one. Oh instead. my god. So this makes it even more format warping because now you can add a color to an to a deck. Yeah, but the, and it's only to on the cards that say choose a background. Oh, okay. So you can't... Oh, <laughs> You can't just add a background to anything. It's similar to like it's saying partner with. 
Gotcha. Or so you best can't friend, choose a background forever. as yeah. a background to another commander. Only if it says choose a background on the commander, yeah. Otherwise, yes, it would be very format warping. I'm already confused, but I'm looking forward to figuring it out. I was wondering <laughs> if you knew exactly how it worked when we started talking about this deck. Now I know you do know how it works. Yep. Yeah, so that's how it works. Uh, very interesting indeed. To the listeners, you know, let us know. Are you excited about this deck? Do you think any of these new cards, especially the Deep Known Terramancer and the Black Market Connections, are they going to be a perfect fit in any of your existing decks? Because I think there's a lot of possibilities oh, there. Totally. So please let us know in the comments. It's always great to see everyone's discussions as well. And if you're going to pick up this deck or any of the cards we talked about today, singularly, or just the entire deck itself, which I would recommend... Channelfireball.com slash command is the place to go. You can buy sealed product there. They have great prices on their marketplace. Not to mention you're shopping from local game stores that definitely could use your business. And they're going to strive to give you the best quality and customer service possible because that's what stores are there to do, to provide the gaming experience for players new and old alike. So check that out, channelfireball.com slash command, or you can just enter promo code command at checkout. And again, when you get your cards and you want to go the full distance with your Baldur's Gate theming, Go to Ultra Pro. Shop.ultrapro.com slash command is the online store you can use with our affiliate code. You can find all the new Baldur's Gate stuff there as soon as it comes up. The play mats, the deck boxes, the sleeves, you name it. Or you can just go get some Ultra Pro stuff at your local game store as well. If you're going back there to play for their Friday Night Magic or, or their Commander Nights, whatever it is, check it out. Get a brand new play mat. I love collecting them. I yep. have so many play mats now and I love just whipping out the one that I think matches my deck when I play. That's a lot, a lot of fun. In this set, you need some D20s so you may want to grab an That's actual a great D20. Point. And you not might, the yeah, spin down, not the spin down. Yeah, and they have full D20 dice sets yep. with the D4, D8, oh, D10s, and 12s. Yeah, so maybe you're going to play some actual D&D after you play some actual magic. Oh, man. slash command. All right, moving on to the end set. We talk about something cool outside the world of magic. Craig, you watched the movie recently. What was it? Yeah, I watched Encanto recently. I went over to my sister's house, and she's got four-year-olds, and they were <laughs> yeah, they were watching it. Uh, for the 20th time. Yeah, for the 20th time, exactly. And my sister was like, she knows that I like Disney movies, and she was like, have you seen this yet? And I was like, no, nah, not yet. And it like, I've got to say, with the marketing, it didn't really grab me. You know, it yeah. wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh, I've got to see this see movie. I didn't see that much marketing for it, actually. Me neither. I don't remember seeing many commercials for it, yeah. And so I wasn't really like, you know, I didn't have it on my list of things to watch. And, you know, sure enough, with most Disney movies, by like five minutes in, I'm like, <laughs> Tell you me know, more. and I'm like, Sing yeah, who's this more. character? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it starts out fun. It's all Lin-Manuel Miranda. Mm -hmm. So it's like the songs are, are on point. Um, yeah, they got, it's classic Lin-Manuel Miranda. There's rap in the song. Exactly. There's a little bit of hip hop. There's a lot of great singing. There's this one song that they have uh, about pressure. Oh, that's yeah. like the, that's so great. good that like, yeah, they just did an incredible job with, uh, and I like the story. It's a good family story. I think it has a good, you know, uh, overall kind of message, overall message yeah. which is good. Uh, and you know, it, it causes you to question things like, you know, it's, I think it was overall a very well put together, uh, uh, film. Yeah. And yeah, I liked it. And, and, and as always, we don't talk about Bruno. So <laughs> if you want to check it out, and I believe you can why. stream it on Disney plus, yeah. uh, it's a, a really fun movie though. I liked it quite a bit myself, my, both my wife and I enjoyed it a lot. One of the main things that I liked about it is like, you know, animation over the years has gotten better and better and better. Right. And the small, like little facial expressions that they do, like mm -hmm. when she's going up to, you know, before that song and she's asking her sister and you see the kind of donkeys make these facial expressions. Expressions, like, <laughs> oh, the, the, like the background characters. Yeah, and it's like it's so good that it adds so much to the movie. Yeah, that, you know, just these small little things that that they've mastered. Kind of this little digital. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind well, of, animators definitely pour their heart and soul into these types of movies, uh, and you can you can really job. watch all of that spirit and heart bleeding out of Encanto at yeah. every little scene there. So it's a really fun movie. Uh, and if you like musicals, of course, it's great for that. Uh, I've yeah. seen tons of people recreating the songs and stuff on TikTok and YouTube. So you know it's a good sign when Lin-Manuel Miranda is behind the wheel there. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, Craig, for joining us on this cool deck reveal for party time. Yeah, Drop excellent. the confetti. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. And for the cleanup set, big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. We've got Arthur Meadowcroft, Shauna Gillows, Damon Lenz, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Land, Jordan Bridges, Sam Waller, Grav Goliath, Jamie Block, Evan Limberger, and Mitch Trafford. And of course, Josh Lee Kwai, who could not be here today. 
but he will be soon enough. Uh, big thanks as well for Truck Ty, who always compiles the stats and the numbers for these episodes. There's a lot of information to parse through, and it's really awesome that we have the help, as well as getting the cards on a computer uh, in front of us so that we can read them without any interruptions. We used to have to go through and screenshot all the cards on our phones, and it would take, you know, it would add an additional hour sometimes to the set reviews. So having a little bit of extra help there is really awesome. So Truck big thanks, Truck. Man. Yeah. Uh, and big shout out, as always, to Jeffrey Palmer. He did our Living Card animations that start the show on YouTube. And sometimes behind us here on set, you can find them online at Living Cards MTG. All right, everyone, go forth and party. We hope to see you out there on the battlefield. Until next time, peace out. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>